this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about gases. In today's video, I'm going to discuss real gases. This is going to be the last video of a series of six videos on the chapter of gases. So please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now, for an ideal gas, we have said that a PV is equal to an RT. And therefore, if we rearrange this expression, we get that PV over an RT should be equal to 1. Now, if we plot this on a curve of PV over an RT versus pressure, the curve will be a horizontal straight line pointing to the value of 1 on the PV over an RT axis. Now, keep in mind that no gas exactly follows the ideal gas law. An ideal gas is a hypothetical concept. In the following diagram, we are going to see plots of real gases at 200 Kelvin for the PV over an RT versus P. So let's first start with nitrogen, and we can see that the curve of nitrogen is far away from being ideal. The same thing we can do with hydrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide. So none of these gases is behaving ideally when we look at their curves. However, if we zoom in to the zone of very low pressure, we can see that at the very beginning, the curves, they started as a straight line, which means that these gases, they were behaving ideally, but this should happen at a very low pressure. Now if we take nitrogen and we do the same plot, but now we change the temperature. So when we start first with 200 Kelvin, this is how the curve will look like. Now we heat the gas and we can see that at 500 Kelvin, it's getting closer to the ideal gas curve, but still it's far away from being ideal. Now when we heat more, we can see that the curve is getting closer and especially in the low pressure region. So we can say that a real gas behaves closely to ideal behavior at a low pressure and high temperature. So to summarize this, for a gas at low pressure, the volume of the container is very large compared with the volumes of the particles. That's we can neglect the volume of the particles and consider that the gas is behaving ideally. Now at high temperature, the particles are moving very fast that the effect of the interparticle interaction is almost neglected. And also we can consider that the particles are moving at a constant motion, which will get a real gas to behave in a similar way to an ideal gas. Now remember the kinetic molecular theory assumes that all the volume of the container is available to the gas molecules. However, only this volume is available to the gas molecules since the other volume is taken by the molecules themselves. And for that, we needed to correct the volume in the ideal gas law. And therefore, now pressure is equal to nRT divided by V minus nB, where nB is the volume of the particles, n is the number of moles, and B is a constant that's determined experimentally. Now, in a real gas, there are some attractions among the particles. Thus, the particles will hit the walls of the container very slightly less often. Now, let's take a look on the inner particles, where the interactions on inner particles will cancel each other. The interactions, therefore, are less effective. However, if we take a look on the interactions on the particles that they are closer to the container wall, so the interactions on particles in front of the container wall are much more effective. And therefore, the particles will be pulled to the inside of the gas and therefore hitting the wall of the container less often and or with less force. And therefore, this is going to affect the pressure. So that's why we will need to add a correction factor to the pressure as well, the same way we did with the volume. So now we can say that the observed pressure is equal to nRT divided by V minus nB, which is the correction on the volume, minus the correction factor 
on the pressure itself, which is A multiplied by N over V squared. Now the real gas equation, or what is called the van der Waals equation, will look like this now. It's the pressure observed plus A multiplied by N over V squared, all multiplied by V minus NB is equal to an RT. So the pressure observed plus A multiplied by N over V squared, this is the corrected pressure or the ideal pressure. Now V minus NB, this is the corrected volume or the ideal volume. Now note that A and B are called van der Waals constants and they are determined experimentally. Now they depend on the nature of the gas and the higher the molar mass of the gas, the larger the value of A and B. Now at low pressure and high volume, we can say that the pressure of the ideal gas is greater than the observed pressure of a real gas. And the volume of the ideal gas is going to be less than the volume of a real gas. Now this is not going to be clear unless we take a look on the following practice example. Now if you are giving two curves and you want to determine which curve belongs to the ideal gas and which curve belongs to the real gas. Now notice there is an intersection area between the two curves. Now this is the threshold between the attractive and repulsive forces of course in the real gas because there is no interparticle interactions in an ideal gas. So now, at low volume and high pressure, the repulsive force will be greater than the attractive force because the particles are forced to come close to each other. Now in this case, if we take the same pressure for both gases, now particles are repelling each other in reality for a real gas, but for an ideal gas, they don't see each other. So if particles are repelling each other for, an, for a real gas, the volume will appear to be higher than in the case of an ideal gas. And therefore, now if we take the two volumes, we can see that the real volume is greater than the ideal volume. So the green curve here belongs to a real gas and the dotted brown curve belongs to an ideal gas. Now if we do the same exercise and we look at the area where the attractive forces are more important than the repulsive forces. So if we take the same pressure, we can say that in an ideal gas, particles don't see each other. But in a real gas, since the attractive forces are greater than the repulsive forces, so the particles will come close to each other and therefore the real volume will be smaller than the ideal volume. So let's check if we will get the same results. So now looking here, we can see that the real volume is smaller than the ideal volume and we get the same results that the green curve corresponds to a real gas. However, the dotted brown curve corresponds to the ideal gas. I hope this video is helpful to you. So please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.